Hey guys, the other day I made a video showing how to install Pop! OS into VirtualBox so you could kind of get a feel for what it looks like, how it works, that sort of thing. And today what I want to do is actually make a video showing how to install Pop! OS into a Chromebook. So in order for this to work, you're going to need a few things. The first being uh, at least an 8 gig uh, USB drive. You're also going to need, of course, an internet connection to download Pop! OS. So you're also going to need a Chromebook with a modified BIOS. And I've made a video about how to modify the BIOS in a Chromebook. Just in case it comes up, you're wondering whatever the Chromebook that you use needs to have a supported Intel processor. Uh, there's more information about that on the video over here. Um, it'll also be linked down in the description below so you can go check that out. If you've already followed that video and you've made it here, awesome. If not, go watch that video and then come back to this. So assuming that you're all set to go and you're ready to follow along, you've already modified your BIOS, you've got a compatible Chromebook, you've got your USB drive, uh, we'll go ahead and jump over to my desktop and I'll show you how to do this. Okay guys, so first things first, we need to download Pop! OS to our desktop, to our computer, so that we can then copy it over to a bootable USB that we'll then put in the Chromebook to get it going. So here we are on Pop! OS's website. This is specifically their uh, download page. Um, so what we'll do is we'll just scroll down a little bit till we get to the download area. You've got a couple of options here. You can just do the regular download or you can download their LTS version. For the sake of this video, I'm just gonna download, click the regular download button there um, because I know that it's gonna pull up this screen. And the reason I wanna pull up this screen is because it tells you exactly what you need uh, to, to, to make this work. First, you're gonna need a minimum of two gigs of RAM. Most Chromebooks have that. Four is ideal. Um, I have run this at two gigs before and it works, but it is a little a little laggy, a little slow, um, but it works. And, and again, once you get in there, it's really, really clean. So that's why I really like to put Pop! OS on a Chromebook. So, of course, you're also gonna need 16 gigs of storage. That's pretty standard for most of these Linux distros. Um, but above that, it's gonna give you a couple of options to download um, either the Intel AMD version or the version that's got an NVIDIA driver in it. Uh, down here, it tells you that the, that's got an NVIDIA driver that works, or proprietary NVIDIA driver for this operating system. Since we probably don't have an NVIDIA GPU in our Chromebook, we're just gonna download um, the Intel AMD version just by clicking download there. Um, and then I'm just gonna cancel this because I've already got it. Um, so of course, once that's downloaded, the next thing we'll need to do, like I said, is copy that over to the USB stick. So uh, let's go ahead and do that next. Okay, so here we are back on my desktop. Uh, we can You can see that I've got a Win32 Disk Imager loaded up and I've got Pop! OS 1904. Of course, it says here AMD and Intel. Um, and I've already put my USB stick into my computer and I've selected it. Uh, I've selected that H drive there. And just to make sure, uh, let's go ahead and pull this up. That's my H drive, that's empty. Don't wanna do any of these others. So H is good there. And then I'm going to go ahead and select with my desktop. And um, then we'll just go ahead and click on write and yes. Okay, so after that finished writing and I put it in the Chromebook and I turned it on, nothing happened. And that's because apparently there's something uh, weird with Pop! OS that's gonna require you to, um, at least from my experience, use a different program. Uh, in this case, we're gonna use a program called Rufus to uh, to create our bootable USB drive here. So uh, let's go ahead and switch over to my desktop and I'll show you kind of what that looks like. Okay, so uh, like I showed before, we're back on my desktop. We've got Pop! OS there. We've also got uh, Rufus up there, uh, sitting there waiting to do its thing. Uh, different USB drive here. Um, I, and I'll go ahead and plug this in. And then we'll go ahead and take a look. Yeah, so, so this right here is that um, basically what was created when I used Win32 Disk Imager, and that's obviously not gonna work, that's broken. Okay, so we're back on my desktop. We've got Pop! OS sitting there. We've got Rufus sitting there. And if everything works right, okay, no label, disk four, eight gigs, that should be fine. We'll go ahead and click on select. Uh, we'll go ahead and select our Pop! OS here. Um, and then we'll go ahead and click start. Because I've already done this once, it may ask if you need if you want to download some files. Um, and those files are going to make it compatible um, with, it's going to make the, the Pop! OS and Rufus compatible to talk to each other um, in a way that it couldn't before. So that's why that's not showing up like it should or like you may see it. Um, but you'll want to go ahead and download those and then tell it to write 
in ISO image mode. Like it says recommended, we'll go ahead and click OK. Um, and it's saying, hey, we're gonna remove everything that's on there, click OK. And then this will take uh, several minutes. For me, it took about eight or nine minutes when I did this last time. So um, basically at that point, uh, once it's finished writing, once it's done doing its thing, we can switch over and plug our USB stick into our Chromebook and boot it up. Okay, so I've got my USB stick that's got um, Pop! OS on it. I'm gonna go ahead and plug that in. Uh, power on the Chromebook, and that should come up on the screen here in just a second. And while all that's going on, I'm gonna be tapping Escape uh, to get into the boot options. Okay, there we go. So now we are in um, the Chromebook BIOS where we can come down here and select uh, our boot manager. Go ahead and click on enter there. We're gonna tell it to boot from the EFI USB device by clicking enter. Now it's asking, do we want to tr or try or install? So we're gonna go ahead and click enter there. And then this may take just a little bit for it to load up all the files that it needs to get us into our boot sequence there. Okay, so here we are on the, uh, the desktop. So let's move this <laughs> over to here. It's actually using this as a second monitor. So that's kind of funny. So let's go ahead and click um, select for English. Um, we're gonna use United States of America for me. Um, English US, that's fine for me again there. Uh, default for the keyboard layout, that's fine, or the input language, it's fine there. So now it's asking, do we want to do a clean install or do we want to do a custom install? Um, for what we're doing, we're just going to do a clean install here. And we'll just let it take care of everything from there. And we'll click clean install. Now it's saying what device, of course, there's only um, this one. This is the SSD that I have in there. Um, so we'll go ahead and click Erase and Install. Now here it's asking if we want to encrypt the drive. Now I don't want to encrypt the drive because um, it's another password that I'm going to have to remember. On the flip side, if you want to add an extra level of security and encryption to your device, uh, here's where you would choose a password um, and you'd enter that a couple of times. Um, but again, I'm not going to do that. Um, so I'm just going to say don't encrypt. Now we're gonna go through the install process. This will take a few minutes. Um, here you can you can get just a generic idea of what's going on. If you wanna get more detailed information as far as what it's doing, you can click the little uh, shell icon there and scroll up. And then you can see that it's gonna run through some code as it's doing its thing. Um, but that's, uh, I don't really care about all that. Uh, as long as this progress bar keeps moving, I'm happy. Okay, so there we are, uh, roughly 20 minutes later. Uh, we've, looks like we've got uh, Pop! OS installed here, so we've got a couple of options. We can either shut down or restart the device. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and click on restart. Uh, while it's doing that, I'm just gonna unplug the USB device and we should get right back into Pop! OS. <clears throat> so it's pretty common I'm on a first boot for uh, things to take uh, considerably longer than normal. There we go. There is our desktop. So I'm gonna make one little change that you may have saw me make um, while we were doing the install. And that's where I just mirrored the display. Otherwise it was, wasn't a true representation of what was going on there. So, uh, so let's go ahead. So apparently for this process, this setup process, I can't uh, change my display and I can't move uh, this over. So I think what I'm gonna have to do here is uh, set up uh, a different camera so that I can get this part and then we'll come back to what I'm doing here. All right, so now we're gonna go through some of the same processes that we went through before. 
as far as choosing uh, input methods and that sort of thing. I'm going to leave this on English uh, like you would expect. Um, I'm actually going to skip Wi-Fi for right now. We'll come back to that. Location services, that's fine. Uh, I'll type in Denver because I'm super close to Denver. Click next. We're going to skip that. We'll come back. And we'll say uh, DB Tech next. Password. And click next. And I will go ahead and start using Pop OS. Now I can go ahead and uh, change my display settings here. And we'll click mirror again like we did before. And we'll click apply. That. Every time I change uh, these settings here, I have to go in and um, actually mess with uh, my capture card settings for some weird reason. There we go. So here we are on our desktop. Now the first thing that we may want to do here is actually run updates. What we're going to do here uh, is we'll click activities. We'll go down to the pop shop, which is this icon right here with the little rocket ship. And uh, then once this loads up, get that just a second. Oh, you know what? Uh, uh, we'll click ignore because I haven't uh, <laughs> haven't actually connected to the wireless. So let's do network. Let's try that again. I saw Wi-Fi in there. There we go. Now I can go ahead. Cool. So now you can see up here at the top, we've got our little icon that tells us that we're connected to the internet. So I'll go ahead and close this. Now we can go over to where it says installed. And it may or may not have anything in here. It says it's up to date. So let's just go ahead and take a look through um, Pop! OS a little bit here. So as you can tell, it's a very, very clean interface. I really do like that only what you need is here. There are some weird things that I'm not a big fan of, I've noticed. Um, like if you open Firefox or really anything, uh, once it opens up, uh, of course, again, the first time opening this program may take it a little longer uh, than normal. Also, again, I'm only dealing with two gigs of RAM here. Um, and, and I knew from the beginning that this was going to make it a little slower than normal. So what you'll notice here is there's just a close button. There is no uh, minimize. There's no restore down. I think if you, you know, you can you can do that. Oh, now now it's got system updates for us. Um, but you can restore down, but you can't minimize um, without you know coming into here, going back into the activities window. Oops. And then going to there, and then you can go back, um, and that's really the only way to minimize, which I'm not a big fan of. Um, but I mean, I think it's just one of the kind of the sacrifices you're going to make for such a clean operating system. So let's go back and let's try to do updates since it finally decided to catch up with us a little bit there. We should be able to go to installed here. There are our updates. So we just click on update all, um, enter our password, and then just let it do its thing. Okay, so after a couple of little hiccups and uh, let's call them learning experiences, we've got Pop! OS installed on our Chromebook um, and hopefully running smoothly with all of our updates installed. And that's pretty much it. Now is the fun part where you get to go explore uh, through Pop! OS and, and kind of get an idea of what it's really meant to be used for. Mostly it is geared towards developers and that sort of thing. Um, and while I do some development, some website stuff, that kind of thing, um, I like it because it's a very clean, clean interface. Um, I've always been looking for something like that and I think that the folks over at System76 have done a great job with creating a, an operating system that 
it's clean and easy to use. And with all of that being said, I think I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up. Of course, if you've got questions or comments or anything like that, leave those down in the description below and I will get to them just as quickly as possible. Also, I'm just gonna throw this out there because it keeps happening. Um, if you want help and support, that kind of thing, leave a comment. Don't go search me out on Facebook. Don't find me on, on Twitter or Instagram and DM me there. Just leave a comment. I'm very active in the comment sections down below. So if you need help, uh, leave, leave, leave that question down there. So uh, now that I've got that little rant out of the way, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap things up. As always guys, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support and I'll talk to you in the next video.